What does that sound like? Coins. And the garbage truck going by as usual. Friday. I love shooting on Fridays. Coins. I'm going to hand this to you. Inside, you're going to find a penny and a quarter and nothing else, okay? There's no Ewok wrapped in tape. There's nothing. Ewok references. You got to love them. I want you to take both coins out. You're going to mark. I got a marker here. You're going to put an initial something on either coin. It's totally your choice. Whichever one you want, I'm going to hand you the marker and then hand me back one of the coins. I don't care which one. Which one? Uh, I'm going to get the penny back. Okay, penny. Go ahead, put a mark on the quarter. I'm going to keep this up in full frame. I know you're trying to hold the purse under his chin. He's trying to... Damn it, man. I wish you wouldn't shoot these videos in the nude. Any mark either side, I don't care, okay? Nice. Okay, good, good. Now we're going to get all these props back from him. Okay, here, live on camera, YouTube style. We got the mark quarter. We'll get to that in a second. I'll hold that up. I'm going to take the pouch back here. I'm going to drop that on the table. I'm going to take the marker back. I'm going to put this in a very, very safe place. Whoa, it's old school. Now, Chris, let's go down. Let's go down down to the table. We're going down slowly to the table. Nice and close, my brother. Okay, get the watch out of the way here. Here we go. Nice and close. Empty pouch. Marked quarter and a penny. Now, did you have a choice of either one? Did you really feel you could have marked either? Uh, yeah. Okay. I'm going to isolate the penny. Sort of... And then I'm going to take the quarter, yours, and watch. I want you to see, as this marked quarter, even though I get nowhere near the pouch, boom, changes places with the penny. But if I've got the penny inside the pouch now, must be your marked quarter. And absolutely everything can be examined. I approach the creation of magic like a uh, a drunk kangaroo who happens to be blind, bouncing around, bruising everyone and myself in the process. Good night. I, I sometimes approach creating magic as uh, problem solving. And one of the things when you're involving transposition, so much of magic, card tricks, bill tricks, uh, uh, tricks uh, with a crying nun, all these different kinds of tricks, they involve duplicates. Duplicates, a lot of magicians. And duplicates are great. There's so much you can do with duplicates. But years ago, I thought it would be great to be able to do a two coin transposition with any two coins. Doesn't matter the size, doesn't matter the denomination, whatever. Any two coins, ball two coins, do a transposition and need no duplicates. Just those two coins. That would be awesome. That would be great to be able to do that. Either I introduce the coins or ball them, whatever. So on this here video, I'm going to share with you the secrets of a two coin transposition requiring no duplicates. Everything can be marked. On the video, I'm also going to announce the winners of last week's Bulletproof DVD Street Magic Collection contest. That was a very long sentence. I'm going to announce the winners. So as always, I hope this week, I hope you are the one. You. No, you, no. Behind. Behind. Yeah, the guy, the guy. Yes, you. I hope you won the Bulletproof uh, collection this week of uh, sort of street magic tricks. Sort of goes well with this kind of coin transposition thing, very organic. Uh, you're also going to have a chance this week to answer the question of the week. Another provocative question this week, question of the week. I always look forward to reading your comments. And I'm going to have my team randomly choose 12 winners from all the comments left below for your chance to win five cards done. Now, five cards done is basically this it's so visual, it's almost pornographic, not so much erotica. Uh, a card changes and changes and changes, and as it changes, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, I use this in a billion of my stand-up shows. It's just the perfect thing. It gets great reactions, all this stuff. So you have a chance to win five cards done. Uh, the question of the, week of the week is coming. I'm also going to share with you the magic tip of the week. Uh, so all that's coming on the video very, very soon. Maybe even now. For your chance to, uh, you know, to enter the contest, it's free. All you have to do is leave a comment down below. Below this video, leave a comment and answer this question. What is something that you have found that you sometimes cut from your performances? It's been said that the editor is the person who makes the final video or the final movie. The editor makes it by cutting things away. And I have found myself, there's so much to be said for cutting stuff from your performances. Some, you know, some of you, I'm sure, love to cut lines of script. You get your presentation smaller and smaller. Other of you maybe like to cut out slights. Di Vernon talked about, you know, if you can do a trick and pretty much the same effect, but you've removed one slight, you've made it more magical. So you can remove a slight from a trick. You can remove a gesture. You can even, you know, some magic gesture. Some, you can remove an audience interaction. Sometimes people want to add audience interaction, but other times in certain situations, people go, no, no, I want to get to the trick. So that thing I was having the audience do, I want to cut that out, okay? 
Uh, so when you're performing a magic trick, what do you? Leave a comment down below and let me, and let, let me know what speaks to you. What's something that you found yourself sometimes cutting or moving from a trick to make it that much more powerful? I start, they get to choose which one they want to mark. I have found people almost always choose the quarter. I guess because they imagine marking this is going to be more difficult or get ink on their fingers, so they almost always choose this. While they're marking this, I take the penny, of course, and I put it away. Now, that's just a thumb palm. And if you're an experienced magician, the moment I picked it up and pretended to put it in here, you would have noticed it was a thumb palm. But if you're not an experienced magician, you'll see that this looks exactly like I take the penny and put it inside. All I'm doing is taking the penny, curling it up into my thumb palm. Okay? And you wanna make sure you don't do too soon. If you do it, if you, they don't wanna, you wanna make sure the hand is, the, the knuckles are facing them so that as you turn, you're pushing it up and in and put your fingers down. Don't come out like this, like you're suddenly in the middle of a stroke. Okay, people don't like that as much. Now, what am I gonna do? I'm gonna just switch this coin for this. There's lots of different ways, lots of different switches you can do, do something visual. But in this performance for you guys, I just did the Bobo switch, okay? JB Bobo, Bobo switch. And I throw the quarter once or twice into my hand, and on the third time I throw it, I actually throw in the penny. It's not a hard move. Here's the, as I throw it, I'm actually gonna hold it back with my two fingers and my thumb and let the penny fly out, okay. the penny's gonna fly out and I'm gonna take this and pull it back into my hand. I'm just pulling it and letting go. The finger and thumb pull in, the fingers hold there. So in performance, it looks like this. Very casual. Snap your fingers. When you snap your fingers, it gives it a magic moment. It also suggests this hand is empty. Boom. Now the moment, I, this is the advanced version, right guys? The moment I open the hand is when I do a, a complicated move in the right hand. I'm gonna, I've taught this on a few other tricks here on the channel. I'm gonna push it into Goshman Pinch or Tenkai. Albert Goshman popularized this move, but it was Tenkai, the brilliant magician Tenkai who created this, okay? Now, traditionally, this coin would sometimes be fed in between the fingers like this. Okay, this was the Tenkai technique, fed through. But uh, Scotty York was the magician who said, just make a fist beneath it and push it into this pinch. Now that happens after the change here. So I do this, everybody's looking here. Maybe I snap my fingers and the moment everyone's looking there, over here with the back of the hand, everything covered, it's basically a fist anyway. So it's easy for me to push all the focus is there, push the coin here and I open my hands like I open my, bring the hand. You don't do this, you don't wanna flash that. So you swivel it around, swiveling around in time to catch the penny. Put it all together and boy oh boy, empty left hand and the quarter. Boom, a second later, just a penny and everything looks, it's just such a, let me do the change one more time, I love it. Really looks like magic. They see a quarter, the mark quarter, boom, like this. Now it's the penny and the hand's coming around, okay? Now I'm gonna pick up this, and so sort of in a continuing action, while they're still kind of registering, oh my God, how, <laughs> what the hell just happened there? I lift up the pouch, I open it, and I wanna make it look like I spill out the quarter. But the quarter's there. So I'm gonna use hand ping chan action, right? I'm here, I'm gonna open this. My, my right hand should be slightly to my left, okay? and I'm gonna move my hand out of the way. Basically, as I apparently dump this out, I'm gonna move this out of the way. And of course, as I move it out of the way, under this action, I'm gonna let it fall from here, all right? So again, it's here. I lift this up like this and spill that out. Visually, absolutely, there's, what I love about this is the visuals. You wouldn't even have to say a thing, okay? You could do this whole thing side up. Drum roll, please. Here are the winners of last week's Bulletproof DVD contest. Here are all 12 of you, you ready? If hopefully, hopefully this week, maybe it's you. Here we go, 12 winners. Michael Eastman, Moritz Schalzlitz, okay, my tongue is bleeding. Moritz, you, you know your name, man. Schatzli, S-H-S-C-H-A-T-Z-L-E, Moritz Schatzlitz. Nate Smith, Ollie Levine, Origami Teacher. I love origami. I think it's 
fascinating and beautiful. Origami teacher, you won. Ron Guy, coin magic hands, coin magic hands, you won. Frank Frost, Brian Weltzer, T.G. Chin, T.G. Chin, Martha Howie, Howie, Howie Mandel, Martha Howie, and Janut Garud, J-A-N-U-T, Janut Garud, okay? You 12 won. Uh, just send uh, your real name and your shipping address to my team. You can email it to them at contact at sankeymagic.com. Send it to them. They'll ship out your prize. Thank you so much for playing. Ask people questions. I find this is one of the most valuable things and powerful things I do. Not only does it send a message to people that I'm interested in them, but it opens things up. A magic trick can so quickly become what I think of as a dead ceremony. Partic you know, pick a card. Look, I found it. Pick another card. Look, I found that. The four aces. One, two, three, four. Magic can become a very predictable dead ceremony. And so much of, I think, making magic and art and making it interesting is about opening it up. It's about finding interesting things. And I find when I ask people questions, particularly in, you know, if you're just saying, you know, is this, uh, but uh, and here's your sign card in my wallet. You turn to them, look them in the eyes and goes, what's your star sign? It gets creepy quickly. Okay, that's not gonna work. But if you can incorporate a question into your performance, then you got a win-win. For example, you're gonna have, do a copper silver trick with some coins. You turn to someone and say, rather than just saying, give them the silver coin, say, would you hold on to that? Turn to them and say, you look pretty strong. Do you get to the gym? That, has, that takes you in so many places, okay? Asking someone if they get to the gym, asking someone if they're pretty strong, okay? You know, they can be a big guy, they can be a small guy, they can be whatever. And then of course, it's all on your way to giving them the coin. And the cool thing, of course, about asking if they're strong, the implication is I want you to hold the coin as tightly as you can. The tighter they hold the coin, the more amazing it seems, and the less apt they're gonna peek at it at the wrong time, right? So it's about finding organic questions that fit with the trick but that also lead to other things. The other great thing about asking questions, of course, and if you're an per experienced performer, you know this, questions are great misdirections. People love to sit back and watch the trick. They like to pretend they're, you know, they're just sort of spectators, even though they're three feet from you, okay? But as soon as you turn to them and ask them a real question, it, it shakes things up and people start talking and people start riffing and all this stuff. So when you ask someone a question, it opens things up and it can be a perfect time to do your top change, get rid of something in your pocket. It's great misdirection. And don't miss your chance to win one of my 12 five card stun card tricks. Leave a comment down below and answer the question of this week, which is what is something you would like to cut from a performance? As I said, it could be a line of script. It could be something the audience does. It could be a prop. It could be a slight, it could be, you know, whatever you think makes the trick stronger because so often, you know, and then you'll find this in so many of the arts, whether it's painting or dance or movies or film, cut, the more they cut, the more they remove so often you can get to the essence, the powerful essence of what you're trying to do. Same applies to magic and magic tricks. So what do you like to cut from a trick? For a whole bunch of exclusive magic content, I'm sharing tips and a whole bunch of things there only on the gram. So follow me on Instagram at the real Jason. To learn 10 expert tips for public speaking, click here. And to learn 10 things magicians should never do, click there.